I only learned that, I only heard that Christmas was a family affair very late in my life. I didn't know Christmas was a family affair. I, I mean, I know Christmas was a community affair. One, one year, me have colic. Because when we leave church on Christmas morning now, you don't go straight to your yard. Uh, you start to decide, you start de Are you going to stop at different people's yard? I, I tell okay. people, you know, peace. Like people talk about crime and violence. Crime, crime is, a, is, a, is, a, is a product of many things. And it's not just a product of poverty. There's a disconnect between the younger generation and the older generation. And sometimes the younger generation may feel that the older people are trying to impose their old time ways That's on them. Successful cultures are those that are able to, in, as, they, as they modernize and move forward, still carry with them the tenets that they lived by and that made them who they are. Sydney Bardi from original, well I'm from here, from this community of Varian Clarendon, I'm actually from Racecourse. I don't live here now, but I'm here every weekend, I come to church down here. Right. So this is my church, generally. So you were Christianity Church? Not this particular church, I'm um, be honest with the Anglican Church. You have something called a cure, which is a series of churches. So my church is one of the, of the churches in this area. Right. And so, but my church is the one at Racecourse. You still live in Jamaica or? Of course. Okay, all right. Tell me some things that you remember about growing up in Clarendon as a boy. Look here, this place, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was nice. It was, it was, it was much more exciting than now. There's a, there's a way in which young people nowadays I mean, we have our different situations. They are now into social media and doing all kind of stuff. What was good about those times in the past is that everything you had to do had to be done with somebody else. And so it fostered, it fostered a communication, it fostered a relationship. So for example, one of the things we do at Christmas is caroling. Caroling was a situation where a group of you as young people, we get up at four o'clock in the morning and then you start moving around the community, just singing carols. And you decide which community you go in, which day. And you do that for about two weeks until the night before Christmas. And you just go, you know, to your, and as you go through the community, you stop at different people's house and you sing carols. And then you're going back home like six hours again. You know, daylight, you start heading back to your home. Then to do whatever you have to do for the rest of the day. So when you, you have to go to work. in the morning or till six in the evening? Four o'clock in, no man, six in the morning. Oh, six a.m. Four o'clock in the morning and when daylight by six o'clock, that's when you're coming back from oh, Carolyn. Oh, okay. Right. right. And we in race course, when we do that, we used to have a, a lady used to have an orange walk and the orange walk used to suffer. <laughs> because a part of the caroling in the race course was that we go, some people go jump over the fence and thief. It was run by some people called the McQueenies. Some white people who used to live in the area. And so we used to go in and miss back with the orange walk and thief orange. Um, <laughs> because of course you are sitting for the road, you have to get something involved, you know, yeah, you have to do something. Fun. And and so the next morning you see all kind of orange skin for the road and that kind of thing. But, but it was a community, I think. I think, I think, the, I think I only learned that, I only heard that Christmas was a family affair very late in my life. I didn't know Christmas was a family affair. I, I mean, I know Christmas is a community affair. So that when you leave church, like on Christmas morning, one, one year may have colic. Because when we leave church on Christmas morning now, you don't go straight to your yard. Uh, you start to decide, you start, de are you going to stop at different people's yard? So everybody's going to go at different yard. And so you start a, a, a dispersal. And, and, and you have to remember in our days too, the community was a real community. So you know everybody. And even though you're not related to them, you know the lady has Tabby, or you know the one there has Auntie Swan, so, and it was like you're related. But her children and you went to school together. So you, I'm coming from church, let's say church finish at nine o'clock. Because one thing about Christmas again is that church starts earlier than usual. So some churches would start five o'clock and all them kind of things. Our churches are like about seven o'clock. So by nine o'clock you finish church and you stop a, 
so and so yard, and you eat cake, and you eat whatever they have, and then you eat sorry. And you go, and then when you're done this, you go to another yard. And you're doing that for the entire day. One year, me do it, and the night, me, me, me then. <laughs> Someone is saying you. I don't have to talk about it. <laughs> right? But that, the idea of leaving church and going home and just sitting down in your own yard with your relatives or family coming, and it was Christmas dinner just for your family. I don't know when that, I don't know when that came up. I don't know what that was about. So the beauty of it was that everybody enjoyed Christmas. The beauty of it was if you are poor, the fact is that it wouldn't be obvious because you are going to people's yard and enjoying yourself. The beautiful thing about it too is that because of that, there was a lot of sharing. We used to have something called a carrier. You never know what name is carrier? A they carrier, upon, like, a carrier was layers. a thing with three layers or so, right? Three layers yes. of containers. Yes, yes. Right. Like a thermos kind of thing. Right, but it's right. And so your, 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 your parents would, would, and this is not only at Christmas, by the way. This, is, this could be a daily thing or an every Sunday thing. But Christmas, of course, is more valuable. And your parents would pack in the dinner. So when you cook, you didn't cook for yourself, you cook for the community. Right. And the parents were packing the dinner and tell you, this one is for Mas Joe, this one is for Miss Kate, this one is for so and so. And so you as a child know how to walk around with these carriers so that the old people who couldn't cook for themselves would, never, would always have food. So that created, I tell people, you know, peace, like people talk about crime and violence. Crime, crime is, a, is, a, is, a, is a product of many things. And it's not just a product of poverty. Because you see, people were poor in those days too. They were poor. Right? But there was a, it was shared poverty. Yes. It was shared poverty. So, it, so your, my parents, one of the things that used to happen at my yard, for example, is we, there is a home called St. Monica's Home for girls um, that is in Chapelton. And it's an Anglican home. And because my mother was Anglican, there was a group of women from the Mother's Union, like this Mother's Union activity, that you say they bring these people together to, to, to eat. Watch what the Mother's Union in Race Coast would do is work an arrangement with the St. Monica's home, because that's where the, these girls live, they don't have any parents. And they'd spend Christmas, the whole Christmas holiday, to, at different homes. So in my home, for example, there were several people in St. Monica's home, in that home every Christmas. And so they spend their Christmas with family, right? That was crucial. Another thing we did was visited hospitals because nobody wants to be in hospital on a day like Christmas. And so we found time, of course, to go caroling in hospital and, and, and that kind of stuff. So it was a shared, it was a community activity and everybody had to be a part of that community. We understood that we had to care for the elderly. We understood that those we knew who was poor and probably was not having proper Christmas dinner. And so they were going to have Christmas dinner. We understood that children had to have toys and if those whose parents were not able to afford toys, we bought toys. We did stuff. Um, um, so it was, when we, had a, we had a youth fellowship too in my community and that youth fellowship would do the caroling, carry things to people's house, take things to people who are who are who are vulnerable, who have, who don't have what other people have, that kind of thing. So Christmas was a community affair. Alright, outside of the church, outside of Christmas, let's talk about some of the fun things that you used to do as a boy. Well, you see, as I said to you, when you have no television, right? You only had, in those days, you only had radio. Mm -hmm. When you have no television, then every activity you had was community. It was a community. That, that's what I mean when I say. No, but what are some of these activities? I was, right, so you, I mean like ring games, mm -hmm. cricket, football. I mean like for, when I was growing up, for example, every day, we used to have a, a play field we used to call Paradise. And every evening, everybody, all the boys would be down there to play football. And you try to get there early to make sure you get pick on you the get team. Pick, yeah. Right? And the elderly, not, it's not elderly, 
wrong word, the older guys, like the, the 20 year olds and the 30 year olds, they would be there and they would be supervising. And, and, and so they would teach those who can play, train, do the training. They would supervise everything and make sure everything goes well. And it was, it was important. So as, as, as three o'clock come and you come from primary, you come from school, even when I was going to high school, you head for paradise to, to, to get your game. And the girls would do netball. And then everybody would get into some kind of ring game. We used to have games like a farmer in the den, bull in a pen. We, um, there were so many things that you did. And then, of course, sometimes in the night, you probably get under, under the one street light. And you start telling Duppy's story, everybody afraid we got the hand. No, I, I, I don't remember the Duppy's story then, but, <laughs> but when you tell the Duppy's story, you say, oh, listen to Duppy's story, and then you're afraid we got the hand. <laughs> right? And then when you reach the hand, you're afraid we go to sleep. But what about the days before electricity? Because me, I come from. No, I, no, 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 I had electricity. I grew, They've always, always had electricity. I grew up in the days of electricity. Oh, for real? Yes. It, oh, you're a young man. In the 90s. I, I was born in the 50s. I'm crazy. Yeah. Mm. Well, in, well, at least in this part of the world, we are sugar. Oh yeah, 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 because you have a sugar. We have the, we have the, we have a sugar mill. I mean, in my years, this was one. Of, this was a built-up area. My little town of Racecourse was a town. Oh. We had a marketing racecourse. Oh wow! I went a marketing alley, right here in alley, and a thriving market too. So a lot of us, our our our, our parents never had to go to Maypen to market. Market was right there. Right. We were a town. We had a post office. The only thing we never have is hospital. You have to come to Lionel Town to get to the hospital. Okay. And the tax office was in Lionel Town. And so certain government buildings were in Lionel Town. Ali had, a, Ali had its own post office. Ali, remember, you know, Ali was the was capital, the capital. Yes, when Clarendon was a parish. I know this. And this was a parish church, St. Yes, Peter's. Yeah, so that the Ali had its own police station at the right at, Near to the crossing, there is a there is an old prison, right? Uh, um, so Ali was a center of commerce as well, called the Ali, right? And Where did the name come from? It, I think it is, has to do with the way it looks when you come through Ali, like when you turn to the square. It's almost like you're going through a little alley. Oh. That, that's my impression, right? And it was called the Ali, right? It's never bigger than it is. I don't know if how it became a parish. It, sorry, the capital of the parish. Because it was already, but then it had a lot of outlying communities. So you, you had Monimus, the factory was up yeah, there. Down you have old Monimus down here, outside of Ali. They have, they have Ali, you have an avenue called Fifth Avenue. I know the name of Fifth Avenue yeah, is it's a particular yeah, kind of yeah, avenue. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So Ali and an avenue, I, I was called Fifth Avenue, where a lot of the you see, what I'm with the sugar plantation is this. A lot of foreigners came. So we, had, we always had white people. We always had, because that, those are who ran the sugar plantations. Yes, yes. The sugar factories. And so the few sugar factories set up their houses. There was a house around, so there was a housing estate near the factory we used to call parents. They were the, where the big owners of money must would live. And so Ali was that kind of community. Growing up in my days, it was, we felt we lived in a town. Mm. We felt that, I mean, we'd go to Maypen as the capital. Because Maypen had, Maypen, shh, Maypen had everything. And so because Maypen had everything, you would still go into Maypen to do stuff. I mean, I went to school in Maypen. Right. I went to Glenmere, I went to school in Maypen. So, you went to Maypen on a Saturday for something to do. Right. You went to Maypen to go to do public things, importantly, because it's the capital. Right. So, but you didn't feel that like you had to go to Maypen. Let's back up a little bit yeah. again. As a boy growing up, on weekends when you now go to school, what are some of the things that you used to have to do with your father or your grandparents? Or you know what? <laughs> no, that was, that, that was, well, I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not too positive about that. Because my father had a hardware store, mm -hmm. and I'm a lazy person. So, the fact is, on a Saturday or so, one of the things that we had to do was work in the shop. Which, I, which as a lazy person like me, I don't want to be working in no shop, right? 
And so, I, but I had to do that because my parents would expect me to spend time working in the shop. So I would come out and work in the shop. So I was happy, for example, when I had classes on a Saturday and I had to go to school. It's because I didn't have to work in the shop. My mom, everybody knew I was a lazy person. I was the laziest person in the house. How much, how much are you? As, as there were five of us. Five of you. Yeah, one sister and four brothers. And I was the lazy one. As a matter of fact, I'm the only one who can't cook. <laughs> because everybody else got involved in this. I was also, I also loved to read. And perhaps because I read a lot. Perhaps because I also did very well at school. Um, perhaps because of all that. Um... I was allowed a certain amount of freedom. I don't know, I don't know. So I wasn't forced to do housework. I wasn't forced to do housework, but I was, but I was forced to do some of the shop things. Mm. Um, which, but what the other, but what I loved to was, um, as I felt as a young man, a boy in those days, I loved to drive. And so, my father's had race, so we had a truck. And my, one of my brothers taught me to drive the truck when I was about 14 years old. And so, one of the things I used to love to do now with the, hard, with the shop is when they pack up the truck with hardware things, block, cement, etc. And then I had to drive to deliver the, these things. Love and they deliver things all over, the, even as far as Rocky Point. I did not... And those were different days. I never had a license. <laughs> but I drove the truck all through all everywhere without a license in those days. Because everybody expected your, your everybody, if you have a son, he's going to learn how to drive. Yeah, yeah, and, right, yeah. Yeah, it was not, and, and you see, and you see, life was not as it is now. So there was not the need for the extra policing that people had to do, like you have to do now. Because life was really easy. Life was not... Community raised children. Yes, yes. 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 So, you, so police never had to be... They never had not much. Vigilant. Yes. Like they were now. Right. You know what I mean? So, they, and then you, I came from a family that was well known. Barclay. And so, you have your parents and a relationship with the police. It's the same thing. We lived so much of a community life. That the place was safe. Yes. The place was orderly. And so the need for you to have curfew or the need for you to, to for police to stop you and check on this and that was never the, I used to even drive the truck to Maypen. I remember when I had school party. When I had school party in sixth form, I drove the truck to the party <laughs> and drove the truck back home, drop off my fellow students from sixth form at Glenmuir. Everybody happy to be in the truck back, right? <laughs> and come back home. It was, it was, it, because life was different. Life was like that. What kind of trouble you used to get in as a boy? What, what, what did I call trouble then? Is that trouble like no? Um, no, like for example, yes, those kind of trouble. You did that. Um, or you, 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 you so they send you to me a pen. I used to always come back by a certain time, you come back late. And of course, you know, those are not the time when there is no phone. So there's no way to contact anybody and tell him you're coming late. Um, that kind of trouble. Or, or, you thought, them said if you go to a shop, and you push up your mouth because you know where I'm going. <laughs> and and, 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 and you, that kind of thing. Or, 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 or what? It is usually about something they may have said you should not do that you ended up doing. Who was the disciplinarian in, a, in a the house? Your, your, mother is, house. your mother is always the person who, 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 who takes the first, first approach. But who being your freedom or your mother or your father? <laughs> that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. My ma Mark, you know, as I said, I was generally treated... With some slap. Right, yes. right. And I, I really wasn't a, 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 a problem child either. Okay. Um, there'd be, laziness is probably the most grievous thing that I would be accused of in terms of what, 
what, I'm lazy, so I'm called to do something and I, I don't move. Mm. Um, but that, the other thing that used to occur to me sometimes is I could be brazen. And Very done brazen. Brazen means I w- <laughs> in those days, I just didn't like you to, to talk back to them. Oh, right, right, right. And right. so I could be on the road and some adult say something to me. I remember I was traveling in a minibus and there was a lady in the minibus. No, I didn't know her. So I may have said hello, like, because it's normal for you to say, to greet, to greet people. It's normal for you to say good afternoon or whatever. But I sat down there in the bus and I never, I didn't speak to her after I said whatever, good afternoon or whatever. And so we came all the way. I think she came in the bus. I was coming from Maypen, and I think she may have come in like a Lionel Town or Alley. So by the time we got to race course when we came off the bus, because she lived in Longwood, I didn't know her. The next thing I know is that my mother said to me that I was, I was with my grand aunt um, on, on a bus, and, I, and she complained that I, did, I go on like I don't know her because I probably think I'm better than her. And, and the grand aunt was there, making the complaint. And I turned to, to her and said to her, but what, what is that? I don't know you. And if you know me, you should have called to me and say who you are. Exactly. Of course, you don't do that. Right. You don't do You're that. You're not supposed to do that. To the elders. Right. But I did. So I had that, I had a little tongue that I would, that would. <laughs> then I say, yeah, I'm out. That would, so. That would sometimes get me in trouble with my right. mother. That would sometimes get me in trouble with my mother. That would sometimes get me in trouble with my mother. And, and so, because of that, I would be scolded at one point or another for, for my mouth. Mm. Um, but, that's how it is. That's how it was. What kind of memory do you have about, you with, about your grandparents? Well, I have two grand sets of grandparents. Right. But one of the, well, put it like this. One of the things you grew up doing is understand that you were expected to visit your grandparents. So this was something that you would do on a Saturday. Your parents would send you to spend the day, either with my grandparents on, the, on my mother's side or my grandparents on my father's side. Now, here's the thing. My mother's father and mother lived together. My father's mother did not live with my father's father. So, so I end up with, well, in a way, right, because my grandmother's gentleman and my father's father's wife would be, would be there. Right. But I understood that this was my grandfather and that was my grandmother on my father's side. And as I said, you had to spend time with them. Um, I had good memories of them, actually. Um, I had good memories of them. They were always telling stories. Uh, but again, again, I had less than other people. My grandfather, for example, on my mother's side rode a donkey. And almost all the grandchildren that I know would tell me that they rode the donkey at some point. I have never been on a donkey. Been on a donkey. I don't know how is it. That's why I'm saying there are some things that happened to me that just seemed to have happened to me. I when, just when didn't. You, when I hear these stories, does it make you feel as if you you may have missed out? No. No. No? No. I have no I have no issue with with we never, we never riding a donkey. <laughs> I have no issue with that. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I'm happy. What, what, I was, what did your grandparents do for work? At the, farm kids. There we are. There would, there would be, there would be farmers. Yes, there would be farmers. And my father's father was like a farmer and a village, village lawyer. My father's father was one of those guys, guys who was very well read. And uh, he was there for like a village lawyer. People would go to him for advice. So is he like a, a legal lawyer or just a lawyer? No, he don't, like, no, 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 no. This is, cult, this is culture. Okay. This is just people who grew up 
Like more, him have sense, I'm going to more it. than other people. Yeah. Right. We always are in the community. You see, this is, this is the crucial thing that we, I don't think we have appreciated in Jamaica enough. That our grandparents and um, had what I call cultural intelligence. Yes. They ran the communities. Yes. They kept the communities going. The, the peace and stability of communities was really situated in those old people yes. who kept things going. And they understood stuff. My mother, at, when she was 80 or 90 years old, she died when she was about, she died in 2018 when she was 93. My mother at 90 could recite poems that she learned in, high, in, prim, in primary school from years ago. My father was also, my father started as a, as a tailor, my mother started as a dressmaker, and then they together created, built, made themselves into a hardware merchant. And my father ended up as a, a, having a hardware store from his humble beginning as a tailor, self-taught, and he, would, and he would go to hardware and lumber in Kingston to get his goods with his truck and come back late at night with the whole heap of lumber and the whole heap of this. And, I had to, and he wanted me to learn what was two before, what was two before, what was one B six, yeah. the lumber. Yeah. Of course, I wasn't keen on learning that. <laughs> what was a one inch nail or a, or a two inch nail, and of course I didn't need to know that. You know, and it's, it's amazing because this is different between the black people and the Chinese, for example, and the Indians, because the Chinese youngster would know that he's going to take over my father's shop. Yes. I had, no, I had no intention to take over my father's shop. I was going to be a teacher. So I don't need to know about no nail. So you knew you were going to be a teacher from my... I wanted to be a teacher from I was born. And are you a teacher now? I taught for most of my... No, I'm not. I, I taught for a long part of my life, and then I left teaching and went to work with government in culture. Um, but culture was also a part of me. You know, I did speech and all those things when I was growing up, when I was at primary school, I went to festival. So culture was, up, but it was like a hobby. It was like a hobby. But I ended up, but I knew I wanted to teach. I was, the kind, I was a person, for example, in my father's hardware store, I would, why am I talking all of this? I would um, teach, teach the hardware things. Mm. So I'm three years old or four years old and I come from basic school and I learn something and I go in the, I go in the shop and I teach the cement and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the lumber or the wire. Whatever I learned at school, I would teach. Why not the men who work in the store? No, 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 no. These are the pe these are what I would teach. Because they're not a talk about what. <laughs> well, of course, my, in my days, I wouldn't be teaching. I wouldn't be bold enough to go teach adults. Because there's a way in which you treated adults in those right, days. Right, right. You, can't, respect, yeah. you can't even be around adults when right, they are they gathered. Right. right. Yeah. So sure. that would not have come naturally to me. And then by the time I went to high school, and a lot of people who I went to primary school with who never got to the same kind of high school, I would have summer school with people in the community who didn't go to high school and teach them during summer a lot of things I learned at school. So I was always teaching, so I knew I wanted to be a teacher. So I've been interested in nail and cement. I said, no, 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 two before, two before six. <laughs> as, a, as a person who loves culture, and culture is a big part of who you are. Culturally, what do you think we are missing in Jamaica as a, as a nation that has placed us where we are today? <laughs> um, let, me say, let, me, let me say this. When we grew up, there's, a diff there's something that happens in a country when people, when the old people are close to the abolition of slavery. When you think that my father was born in 1923, slavery was abolished in 1838, that's less than 100 years. His father would have been born in, say, the 1800s. So he would have been a Like Marcus Garvey. So what you find with these persons is that they understood identity issues. They understood 
what the British did to us. So my father, my parents would, would want to, education for them was something that they never got. And so they were, they focused on who we are. And identity means community. They focus on the African thing about the village that raises a child. Yeah. This is absent now in, our, in, in the country. There's a disconnect between the younger generation and the older generation. And sometimes the younger generation may feel that the older people are trying to impose their old time ways on them. But it is not that you're trying to impose your old time ways. It is that successful cultures are those that are able to, in, as, they, as they modernize and move forward, still carry with them the tenets that they lived by and that made them who they are. And I think that is what is the challenge in Jamaica. There is an extent to which we have moved on to what is a more modern version of who we are. But we have separated ourselves or we have not taken enough of the elements of the past that made us who we are. And when I explain, to you, I see the look on your face. Yeah. For example, a simple thing that I spoke about a while ago, that the use of the carrier. Yeah. The simple thing like, it was natural. It was not a Labor Day activity. It was natural for us to take our food to those who are in need. It, it was a normal part. We call it, became, it was a part of our culture to share, to work with the disadvantage. It was, when, when, when Labor Day came across, and Michael Manley spoke about this, put work into Labor Day and the voluntary work, it became easy. We, we would go to the school and build out the school, the school football field. We would go and build a house for a lady who was living in a little catch-up place. That was, now there is a disconnect between each other. And people tend to be more focused on their on individuals. Do you think there's a turnaround? In terms of what? Can we not go back, but can we repair the damage that yes, is already done? Yes, you can, you can always do that. You can always do that. But it has to be deliberate. Mm. You've got to decide that you're doing that. And because, you see, sometimes I tell people that a lot of times we expect our people to behave in a way in which they were never, they were never taught to behave. And so we, ex we expect things to happen accidentally. My position is if you want something to happen, you gotta do it deliberately. Yes. If I want you to, to for, and I, I'm giving you something basic. If I want you to, to be able to say, look, every time you see an, 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 an adult, you must say good morning or good afternoon. I've got to, I've got to physically deliberately see them teach it. it to the young people. You've got to say in your school that this is something, if I see it, if I see you walk by, and then you get them to understand what it means. So it's not just a regimen that you are giving them, like, like when you put on some laws and you force children to do it. You've got to show them the value of it. And so, yes, you can reorient, reorganize your society. But it has to be deliberately done. Very but he knows the song. Very good. Sir. Me daddy went dead. Me daddy dead. Me daddy. And he no left no will. He only left one call. Be the whole a week. And me bigger brother. He can be well. From me, glory be to God, glory be to God, but be the whole of we. <laughs> Thank you very much. Those brother. are the people who are the custodians of the culture. Yes, very true. Thank you, thank you. No, me no one holy for that to know to. All right, give me one song before you go. Away. One more song. Thank you. Give me thank something. You. Give me a song key. Our hymn. Just give me something, you know. I am dying, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice, voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to 
Close, uh, John, John to me. me.